Coming up, I will discuss how to set boundaries with others and why it's more crucial than ever to do so. Let's get started. If you're new here, my name is Matthew Royce. I am a knowledge enthusiast. Lack of boundaries invites lack of respect. Setting boundaries is one of the most overlooked social skills. It's essential in today's day and age where our personal and professional lives are blurring together. Additionally, boundaries are a crucial part of clear and concise communication. Boundaries communicate what you will and will not tolerate. Boundaries establish your mental and physical space. They determine the perimeter just like a fence in a yard. They protect you from harmful experiences. No is a complete sentence said Anne Lamont, an American author. Boundaries help you improve relationships, empower yourself, and protect your mental and physical health. They help you set limits around your time, emotions, body, personal space, sexuality, morals, ethics, material possessions, and finances. They also help you protect yourself from being used and manipulated by others. If someone gets mad at you for creating a boundary, consider that a good sign that the boundary was necessary, said Jenna Korf, an offer. Boundaries are set with family, significant others, friends, colleagues, and even strangers. Setting boundaries can be scary, frustrated, and overwhelming, but they are crucial to your health because they empower you to take charge of your life. Boundaries start by permitting you to have them. They are a form of self-care. When you say yes to others, make sure you are not saying no to yourself, said Paul Colello, a Brazilian lyricist and novelist. Boundaries help make sure you don't feel like you've been taken advantage of or taken for granted. You prioritize your comfort over the comfort of others. You don't have to be everything to everyone. Excellent and healthy boundaries help you avoid feeling powerless and hopeless. They help you live the life on your terms and ensure you're living a fulfilled and balanced life. I have had trouble setting boundaries in my life and you may be having trouble as well. I have compiled a list of 10 tips to help you set boundaries in your personal and professional life. Number one, make them concrete. Boundaries are just made of brick and cement, said Nikita Durandi, a therapist. Boundaries can seem vague and invisible. One of the first steps is to visualize them and name them. Boundaries should not be confusing. To make them more tangible, you can write them down. Set time each day to reflect on your life and ask yourself what people in your life are causing you unnecessary stress. Discover who gives you energy and who doesn't. Determine what relationships make you feel safe, supported, and valued. Write down what makes you feel safe and stress-free in one column and what makes you uncomfortable and emotionally exhausted in another column. Put feelings next to these things and people, such as happy, mad, scared, and sad. These situations and relationships that make you mad, scared, and sad are where you should set healthy boundaries. Number two, share them with others. Boundaries need to be communicated first verbally and and then with action, said Henry Cloud, an American author. Once you have identified your boundaries and put some thought into them, you must openly communicate them. You can set boundaries in your mind, but you must communicate them to others. Don't assume that others know your boundaries, especially if you haven't communicated them. It would help to communicate your boundaries and where you draw the line. If you feel scared to do so, take a deep breath, Share them in a kind and direct way. You'll feel relief after you do it. Number three, stand firm. The only people who get upset about you setting boundaries are the ones who were benefiting from you having none. When you first communicate your boundaries, people may not understand or respect them. You must stand firm and kindly remind them of your needs. Be strong and don't give in to any guilt and shame. Face your fears head on and don't live as a victim. Stay firm by telling them you are okay with X, but not with Y. Stay true to your values and refuse to be a doormat to others. You can say, I'm having a hard day and I need some space to clear my head, or this, insert topic, makes me feel uncomfortable because I'm now going through something right now. Number four, be open and honest. Don't lie about things, especially your feelings. You must be open and honest with others because that's a cornerstone of healthy communication and relationships. When you are honest and sincere, you can avoid resentment, work through conflict, and ensure people's needs are met. Be 
being open and honest may require some vulnerability, but it helps others to understand you are not dismissing them. It can help you create a boundary that sticks and is reoccurring. Don't lie or send mixed messages with your boundary setting. You will only make things worse. You can't say one thing and then say something totally different later. Number five, don't be afraid to say no. You can be a good person with a kind heart and still say no to people. You don't have to say yes to everything. You can say no without burning bridges. People who are afraid to say no tend to meet the demands of everyone frantically they said yes to. No is a powerful word and you shouldn't feel guilty for saying it. Many people have been programmed that no is a bad word. No is an excellent way to express your courage and an essential way to set boundaries. You have the power to choose where you spend your time. You shouldn't do it if it doesn't feel right in your gut. Saying no doesn't have to be rude or require an explanation. Yes and no shape your reality, so pay attention to them every time you say them. Number six, carve out time for yourself. Boundaries are part of self-care. They are healthy, normal, and necessary, said Doreen Virtue, an American author and a motivational speaker. Don't feel selfish for carving out time for yourself. Taking time to yourself can help you build confidence, become more emotionally stable, and display emotional intelligence. Solitude enables you to create a habit of self-reflection. Set time for at least two hours every week for me time. Creating time for yourself will help you develop healthy boundaries. You'll have more clarity with your relationships and help you define your boundaries. Self-love can lead to deeper relationships. Number seven, don't lose yourself. If you don't set boundaries, you're giving yourself away. It can be easy to take care of your own needs after you take care of the needs of others. You must unlearn to self-neglect yourself and don't lose yourself for the benefit of others. Don't think taking care of your needs is selfish because it's not. Don't fall for others who say taking care of yourself is incorrect because when you take care of yourself, you set boundaries. Relationships are a two-way street. Both parties must communicate and choose what they want and need. Don't tell yourself that you don't deserve suggestions or preferences. We all have needs and desires. When you don't display yours, other people will walk all over you. Number eight, determine how much time you can give. Givers need to set limits because takers rarely do, said Rachel Wolchin, an author and artist. It can feel overwhelming if people contact you at all hours of the day. You must set how much time you can give to others. Set up times to talk to family, friends, and colleagues. Dedicate specific times for checking in and handling issues. Setting time boundaries can help you set overall boundaries. Help people become aware of how important time is. There are only so many hours in a day. When you structure your time, you'll structure your boundaries. You're more likely to say no to others when you realize you can't do it all in a day and you'll avoid experiences that don't serve you well. Number nine, be clear and concise. Remember that clear is kind. The more precise you are with communication, the more likely your boundaries will be respected. Boundaries should be about the actions, not an attack on the character of someone. It can help you communicate using the word I instead of you. Focus on what you need and you'll set a boundary. Be clear and concise without over explaining your boundaries. Have a less is more mindset when drawing the line with others. Be specific with your statements. For example, don't say, you can't talk to me like that. Instead say, if you talk to me that way, I'll leave this conversation. Number 10, don't apologize if people push back. Do not justify, apologize, or rationalize the healthy boundary you are setting. Just set the boundary calmly, firmly, clearly, and respectively, said Crystal Andrus, an American author. Don't feel like you need to apologize or explain your boundaries. You may need to repeat yourself, but you shouldn't apologize when someone pushes back on your boundaries. Some people don't take no for an answer, and that's their problem, not yours. Okay, let's bring it all together. First, if you like what you saw here, please hit the subscribe button below. Whatever you are willing to put up with is exactly what you'll get. These 10 tips can help you set healthy boundaries in your daily life. Make them concrete, share them with others, stand firm, be open and honest, and don't be afraid to say no. Furthermore, carve out time for yourself, don't lose yourself, determine how much time you can give, be clear and concise, and don't apologize if people push back. When you set boundaries, you protect your mental, physical, and emotional well-being. You can foster healthier relationships in your personal and professional life, and 
and you'll feel empowered. In today's age, setting boundaries is more crucial than ever. If you don't set boundaries, you'll go down a path where you are depressed and stressed. Anyone angered by your boundaries may be toxic. It would help if you rethought whether you want them in your life. People will drain your energy if you don't set boundaries. Thank you for watching. Until next time.